One of my favorite moments in Organic Chemistry 2 comes when we combine two carbonyl worlds into one. And we're going to do that in this video, combining the world of the nucleophilic nature of the alpha carbon in enols and enolates, which we've been touching on in this unit, with something we've seen previously, the electrophilic nature of the carbonyl carbon, particularly in ketones and aldehydes, where we looked at nucleophilic additions of a wide variety of nucleophiles to the carbonyl carbon. And now we're gonna ask the question, why not an enolate nucleophile, <laughs> right? Why not an enol nucleophile adding to a protonated carbonyl under acidic conditions? That can absolutely happen, and it's an extremely important, both historically and practically, reaction type known as the aldol reaction. The aldol reaction combines a nucleophilic enol or enolate with an electrophilic aldehyde or ketone, and the products are, as the name suggests, aldols uh, in, in some cases, beta hydroxy ketones or aldehydes more generally, or we'll see in this video that they can these products can eliminate water to generate conjugated products known as alpha beta unsaturated ketones. Hugely important products because they retain functionality that can be further modified, and the aldol reaction can establish stereocenters at the electrophilic carbonyl carbon. So this reaction has received a ton of attention and is extremely, extremely important in modern organic chemistry. I really cannot overstate the importance of the aldol reaction. It's also just a really beautiful reaction in my professional opinion for what it's worth. All right, so let's start with the example of an aldehyde and what happens when we treat an aldehyde with alkoxide or hydroxide base. We may wanna do this, for example, to try to alkylate an aldehyde, try to do an SN2 alkylation of an aldehyde using methoxide base to de deprotonate reversibly at the alpha carbon, and that reaction won't work at all. If we see any reaction of the aldehyde, it will involve aldol addition. And the aldol addition involves a nucleophilic enolate under basic conditions, adding to the neutral carbonyl carbon to produce what's known as an aldol, a beta hydroxy aldehyde. So I wanna break this reaction down before we dig into the mechanism so that we understand why this is called aldol addition and what it looks like from the perspective of the aldehyde. So notice, too, first of all, that this actually involves two equivalents of the aldehyde. Two equivalents of the aldehyde are involved. Here's one equivalent, sort of on the left, and one equivalent on the right. And if we pay attention to the right half here, what it looks like has happened is a nucleophile, whatever it may be, has added to the carbonyl carbon, right? So from the perspective of the atoms inside that box, this reaction looks like a nucleophilic addition, addition of a nucleophile to the carbonyl carbon of this carbon labeled beta. From the perspective of the left half, this also looks like an addition reaction. If we think about the enolate intermediate that would be generated when OH minus deprotonates alpha to the carbonyl, right? It looks like we have added an electrophile to the alpha carbon of the enolates. And this is why this is called aldol addition. The two equivalents of aldehyde sort of add to each other to create a product in which the elements of two molecules of aldehyde have come together into a single molecule. All right, let's talk about the reaction mechanism, which really is just going to, again, bring together these worlds of electrophilic addition to enolates and nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl carbon that we've already seen before. So first step, hydroxide base is going to deprotonate the aldehyde reversibly. Now, this will happen in just a solution of the aldehyde mixed with hydroxide to a small degree and that enolate is still swimming in a ton of aldehyde, right? So there are neutral aldehyde molecules everywhere around this thing, and they're electrophilic. So the enolate we know is nucleophilic at the alpha carbon. The neutral aldehyde molecules just swarming around that small amount of enolate are electrophilic at the carbonyl carbon. So we can link them together via electron flow from the enolate. We're familiar with this kind of electron flow if you refer back to halogenations, SN2 alkylations we've seen, even the acetoacetic and malonic ester syntheses, we saw this. And from the electrophile's perspective, well, this just looks like nucleophilic addition, right? And so the net result we can kind of think of as nucleophilic addition of the enolate to the neutral carbonyl compound. You can also think of it as addition of an electrophile to the nucleophilic half. It doesn't really matter how you think about this. I sometimes write it as A sub E plus ADN to emphasize that both things are happening here. But in any event, 
We get a new carbon-carbon bond. There it is, highlighted in red, and an alkoxide intermediate, a beta alkoxide uh, aldehyde, if you like. And then uh, the first step generated water, right? This proton transfer generates water, and water can donate a proton back to the alkoxide to give the neutral product. And this is our aldol product. It is a beta hydroxy aldehyde in this case. And beta hydroxy ketones can also be formed through aldol reaction. We can envision the reaction based on ketone enolates. Here's an example with acetone and sodium hydroxide. If you dissolve sodium hydroxide in acetone and mix up acetone with an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide, you get aldol addition of acetone to itself. Notice we have the sort of electrophilic acetone molecule here and the nucleophilic acetone molecule here. So this reaction can be envisioned for ketones as well. It establishes a carbon-carbon bond. That's one reason we love it. Another re reason we love it is that this carbon, which is formerly the electrophiles carbonyl carbon, can become stereogenic, can become a stereocenter. And in fact, that's exactly what's happening here. Notice we've got four different groups, H, methyl, OH, and this whole bit connected to this carbon. It's a stereocenter. And so stereoselective uh, stereo aldol reactions are a heavily, heavily studied research area over the years. On this slide, we dive a little bit deeper into the aldol reaction and some of its variants and see what can happen to those beta hydroxy ketone or aldehyde products, particularly when heating is involved. First, let's talk a little bit about aldol reactions of ketones. The aldol product is definitely thermodynamically favored when an aldehyde is hit with hydroxide or alkoxide base because the aldehyde carbonyl carbon is pretty electrophilic and the products are relatively unhindered since we retain an H, for example, here, and we retain an H at uh, the carbonyl carbon that remains intact in the product. In ketones, the new tetrahedral center ends up pretty crowded, ends up quaternary um, with four groups, no H's attached to that carbon. So this gets pretty crowded. And so for most ketones, aldol addition is actually thermodynamically disfavored. This wants to run backwards. This wants to eliminate a molecule of, in this case, cyclohexanone to get back to two equivalents, like you could say, of the, the starting cyclohexanone here. And the fragmentation of a beta hydroxy ketone or uh, aldehyde like this into two carbonyl compounds is called the retroaldol reaction. This is actually a really important reaction in biochemical contexts. When you study glycolysis, you will see this reaction, and we will touch on examples where we see glucose breaking apart from a six carbon molecule into two three carbon fragments via a retroaldol reaction. Remember that in your biochemistry courses if you go on and take biochemistry that the aldolase enzyme is responsible for a retroaldol reaction in glycolysis. Fundamental organic chemistry showing up in biochemistry there. When you take the beta hydroxy ketohyde and you heat it under either acidic or basic conditions, dehydration will occur. A molecule of water will be lost and will end up with a product like this. Now this can actually be used to drive these disfavorable uh, additions of aldol additions of ketones all the way to product since we end up getting a condensation uh, here and with the loss of water we establish a conjugated system. That's really what's important here is, is the conjugated system. So notice, we'll talk about the mechanism of this on the next slide. The net result here is the loss of the elements of water an H plus and an OH minus is a good way to think about it. And the resulting product here contains a carbon-carbon double bond between the alpha carbon and beta carbon. And so it's called an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde. Or for short, we'll use the term enone. This refers specifically to an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone or enal for an alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde. And the overall process with the loss of water is known as aldol condensation. The word condensation evokes this idea that we're losing a small molecule. Uh, here it's, it's H2O. And this is driven by the formation of a conjugated system. It does require heat because it's actually a little bit difficult to, to get this to go. Hydroxide is not a great leaving group is one of the reasons that's the case. And so anytime you see heat, this indicates that a condensation is taking place. This is just a good thing to note mentally. Um, at least for this course, that whenever heating is indicated, condensation will occur. Whenever heating is not indicated, 
only addition will occur unless, and this is on the slide, condensation would establish an extended conjugated system beyond just these four atoms highlighted in orange. And by extended conjugated system here, we mean more p orbitals on this side, for example, or more p orbitals on this side in the event of something like an aromatic ketone. Those are impossible to stop at the addition stage because they lose water just so, so readily. And the most common and important example of this involves benzaldehyde as the electrophilic side with a phenyl ring here as opposed to a methyl. This produces what's called the synamyl group, which is the name for this entire group here with a ketone, double bond, and the phenyl ring there. This is a synamyl ketone, this being known as the synamyl group. The aldol condensation process starting from this beta hydroxy ketone or aldehyde looks a little bit odd because it seems to imply that we're using hydroxide as a leaving group and in organic chemistry one it was probably emphasized at some point that hydroxide is not a good leaving group. Alcohols for example do not undergo SN2 reactions um, with anionic nucleophiles and that's actually still true. The only reason this reaction works, as we'll see on the next slide, is because this is an alpha carbon. This is a relatively acidic carbon, alpha to a carbonyl group. So it's possible to deprotonate here and generate an enolate, and that has the ability to kick out hydroxide. So the mechanism of aldol condensation, conversion of the beta hydroxy ketone or aldehyde into an enone or enal, does not involve S, uh, E2 or E1 elimination. So E2, remember, is concerted deprotonation and loss of the leaving group. E1 is loss of the leaving group followed by deprotonation. What happens in the aldol condensation is the third possibility, deprotonation followed by loss of the leaving group. And it's called E1CB because it's an E1 elimination unimolecular, the kinetics are unimolecular, um, via the conjugate base as an intermediate since deprotonation occurs to generate the conjugate base, and that's a key reactive intermediate in this mechanism. So we're gonna look at this under basic conditions first, and then touch on how it looks under acidic conditions as well, since you may see that also. So let's skip over the aldol addition. We've already touched on that mechanism in base. This is our beta hydroxy aldehyde in this case. And under the basic conditions used, hydroxide remains around. This is actually a base catalyzed process. The addition is base catalyzed to get to this point. So hydroxide is there. We deprotonate at that alpha carbon to a small extent. This generates an enolate like this. And notice in this enolate, we have the negatively charged alpha carbon adjacent to hydroxide right here. So it's possible for this to kick out hydroxide with formation of a conjugated system. And it is key that a conjugated system is generated. The orange highlighting is key. If that did not occur, that elimination of hydroxide would not take place. That's why having the carbonyl group right here is critical because this elimination to form a CC double bond establishes a conjugated system. That's what drives this whole deal. So notice the order of events here. First, we deprotonate. Here is the conjugate base, that's why we call it E1CB, and then beta elimination of hydroxide occurs, loss of the leaving group, if you like, occurs to give the final CC double bond containing product. Under acidic conditions, something similar takes place. Now the initial aldol addition occurs through an enol intermediate. I'm not gonna draw that out, but this is a good opportunity to pause and draw that acid catalyzed mechanism of aldol addition on your own, protonate the carbonyl first is the only tip I'll give you. That gets us to the same beta hydroxy aldehyde intermediate though. The difference here is we're gonna to tautomerize to an enol as opposed to generating an enolate under these acidic conditions. But this enol can kick off a leaving group similar to the case above. Now before that happens, we need to protonate the leaving group. We're not gonna kick off hydroxide under acidic conditions. And now that that leaving group is protonated, now beta elimination can take place. And this gets us to the protonated form, the conjugate acid of the product, if you like, loss of a proton from that by A minus the conjugate base of the acid catalyst gets us to the same enal product. So there are a few more proton transfers under acidic conditions because we've got to go through 
cationic or neutral intermediates throughout the mechanism, but the same basic idea applies. We start by generating the enol, deprotonating, where we need to lose a proton. And then, after a proton transfer to establish a good leaving group under these acidic conditions, only then do we kick out the leaving group in a beta elimination step. So this is also E1CB with not exactly the conjugate base, but the enol tautomer of the beta hydroxy aldehyde uh, involved in this mechanism as a key reactive intermediate.